We are all going on road trips again. So it goes without saying that the arrival of the all-new Avanza couldn't have come at a better time. Ten years is a long time to keep a model going in the market. By year six, the Avanza still sold about 10,000 units, but every year after that saw its sales gradually drop until about only a little more than 4,000 customers bought it in 2021. Now I have with me the 2022 Avanza, and it's been with me for a couple of days. Here are my early impressions. Now the body not only measures bigger than the previous generation, it actually feels it. But more on that in just a little bit. The facade is definitely more keen as Toyota calls it, and it now gets thinner split-type LED headlamps. Now, this G unit gets 16-inch wheels. Technically, this is built by Daihatsu, and that is why it uses Daihatsu's new global architecture, or DNGA. The big change is the layout. This is a front-wheel drive, not a rear-wheel drive. More importantly, it is upgraded from a semi-monocoque to a full monocoque chassis to reduce weight, improve handling, and increase ride comfort will be able to tell if that worked during the drive. Now the rear has a new tailgate, this spoiler, reshaped bumpers, and slimmer LED taillights. I like the design a whole lot better. It's more stylish now and doesn't look like the MPV that it really is. I mean, the effect of these angular shapes in the front, and of course this deep crease along the character line. I feel like Vanna White all of a sudden. Give it a personality that's maybe a level higher than the Innova, to, in, my, in my opinion. I only wish they retained the 200 millimeter ground clearance. This model only has 190 millimeters of ground clearance. And while it really looks good this low, that 10 millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter difference may feel like a lot, especially when you're fully loaded or you're crossing a deep puddle. Now inside is an all-new dashboard, a restyled instrument cluster with dual gauges, and an updated center stack complete with a new digital air conditioning system. This has a push start button and a multi-information display. Now the surface right here is plastic. I was expecting it to be padded because this is a top spec model, but I do like that the whole layout mimics the sharp corners of the facade, which makes the entire design of the dashboard looks somewhat edgy and stylish. There's no leather here, not on the steering wheel, not on the door panels, not on the seats, just a little on the uh, shift boot. The seats have a new two-tone fabric material. Um, it has pretty good bolstering. It feels a little small, but I do like that the steering column is adjustable so I can get into the proper driving position, but I do wish that it had lumbar support. One of the new features of the all-new Avanza is a new infotainment system. It uh, now sports an 8-inch touchscreen. It's um, tablet-like, beautiful, colored, comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and has Bluetooth connectivity. There are two USB ports, but I have an issue with both, actually. Um, the, the first USB port is right here. It's integrated into the, right by the screen. So my issue here is if, you're, if you want to access Apple CarPlay, then you're going to have to settle for your cable dangling here. The other USB port is more discreetly placed. It's right here, but this is only for charging. I hope in the facelift update, you know, it's more sorted out. Now, since they switched to a front-wheel drive system, there's no longer a prop shaft or propeller shaft running underneath. Now, that's why the floor is this low, unlike before, and you can tell it's barely a lift in the middle. Remember at the start when I was telling you about how much bigger the Avanza is compared to the previous generation? You can see it now. I mean, take a look at how much leg room I have here. And this is, the front seat isn't even pushed all the way up front, all right? Um, other features in the second row you will enjoy are the aircon vents with its own controls. And you've got a couple of USB ports, and these are for charging. These are 2.1 amps, so fast chargers, a couple of them here in the second row. 
Now, one of the best uh, features in the cabin of the all-new Avanza has to be its many seating configurations, and that includes, ta-da, the long sofa mode. Plus, while you're here, you get a couple of cup holders on each side, and there's one cigarette lighter outlet right here. Now, all I need is a date. Sir, you're married. <sighs> of course, I met my wife. Hi, Jing. This Avanza is the only one that gets the bigger 1.5 liter engine. Output is 106 PS and 138 Newton meters of torque. It's sent to the front wheels via a CVT or a continuously variable transmission. Now ditching the old four-speed automatic is the best thing Toyota did for the Avanza. It allows the engine, the new engine, the 2NRV engine to be calmer. It was peaking at around just 1,600 RPM while I was cruising at about 100 to 110 kilometers per hour on the highway. Revs do get a little high, around 3,000 RPM, when I put pressure on the throttle for overtaking maneuvers, but it'll pull it off whether you're in the city or the highway. When it comes to fuel and co consumption, I picked up in mixed driving conditions, that's highway and city, I picked up about 11 and a half, 11.4 kilometers per liter. I was expecting 12, that's close enough. Electrics, uh, electric power steering feels heavy when you're driving slow, but lightens up as the pace picks up. Uh, so that feels more natural, giving correct feedback relative to the driving scenario. So expect it to feel heavy, especially if you're making like a U-turn. And by the way, turning radius is pretty good for the Avanza as well. It feels like a small, compact vehicle. It may not have Toyota's safety sense, but it still has a pretty comprehensive selection of features. That includes blind spot monitor, rear cross traffic alert, vehicle stability control, and hill start assist. Comfort is as expected. The suspension is a little stiff, but nothing jarring, even when the roads get bad. I do think noise, vibration, and harshness insulation could get better because I could hear external noises, even motorbikes, uh, sound coming into the cabin and vice versa. There was one time I was playing music, not even that loud, and I stepped out with the doors and windows closed, I could still hear it from, from outside. Well, maybe because it's deep down inside, this is still partly Daihatsu. The Avanza 1.5 G CVT is vastly improved, but it could be better. With its new design, it now looks like a crossover with MPV capabilities, but that's not even the best thing about it. What is it, you ask? Has to be the badge, Toyota badge, because with it comes customer expectations of high reliability, high durability, and that's what the Avanza will have to live up to. Now, the G variant, which is priced at 1,039,000 pesos, isn't even the best-selling Avanza yet. It's the E-Variant, priced at 984,000 pesos. But with 1,611 units sold in the last two and a half months, the Avanza could be on the way to becoming Toyota Motor Philippines' best-selling unit again. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. I'm Eric Tipan from AutoIndustria.com.